Alrighty, my friends, we're going to solve some real exam problems using the Van Hoff equation, and this is one form of the Van Hoff equation right here, where this is geared towards a general chemistry class, so no calculus. If you want to see a more hardcore calculus-based version of the Van Hoff equation, then check out my other videos, but otherwise this is what we'll use, and we're going to jump right into it. Here's our first exam problem for the reaction 2SO2 gas plus oxygen gas is in equilibrium with 2SO3 three gas and we have uh, an equilibrium constant for pressures uh, 25 degrees celsius is 7.2 times 10 to the 24 this is very very large <laughs> that's huge and an enthalpy change a reaction enthalpy standard reaction enthalpy this is at one bar uh, equals negative 198 kilojoules per mole and we want to know what the equilibrium constant at a thousand kelvin is um, Oh, given. We don't really need this, do we? Okay, so uh, let's go from here. Now, we're going to start off with the Van Hoff equation. So ln K2 over K1 is equal to negative delta H naught over R times 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. Just like that. Now, be careful. If there isn't a negative here, then this is T1. But if there is a negative here, then this is T2, just like normal, final minus initial. Uh, so sometimes this negative trips people up. Okay, so it doesn't matter which is K2 and which is K1. We're solving, we want a K, so let's call this K2, just because it's in the numerator here. It doesn't really matter. And we'll call this K1. And what does matter, though, if this is K1, then this has to be T1. It, it, we want it in Kelvin, but... That we need this so that this has to be T2. Alrighty, so we'll have K2 over, now what's K1? 7.2 times 10 to the 24 equals negative. Now we have a number here, negative 198 kilojoules. Now I'm, I'm thinking pro a little bit actively, so this is in kilojoules, and I know that R is in joules. If, if you're not sure, check out your units of R, and the units have to match. So this is in kilojoules per mole. I'm going to times it by 10 to the 3 to make it in joules per mole. And the reason I converted this to joules per mole is because if you look at your formula sheet, R is 8.3145, usually just 8.314 in most formula sheets, uh, joules per mole kelvin it's usually given in joules not kilojoules so you want these joules to cancel out so that's not too bad oh uh see this there's a negative here and this is a negative so i don't want to lose a negative so i'm going to put this negative here i'm going to put my denominator back i'm also going to put the negative here you can make it positive but i just don't want to lose that negative because uh, i've done that before okay now t2 is always go back this is t2 a thousand kelvin so that's good we want things to be in Kelvin. This is in Kelvin, and we can't put degrees Celsius in here, even if, yeah, it has to be Kelvin. So, to 25 degrees Celsius, we need to, right, this is 25 degrees Celsius, we need to add 273.15, so that makes it 298 Kelvin. Okay, and, I mean, we could solve for K2 first. Maybe I'll do... Yeah, we can't do that in this one, but uh, I'll just plug in the numbers to kind of make it simple. Okay, so negative and a negative, that's positive. So 198 times 10 to the power of 3 divided by 8.314. And that's times, bracket, 1 divided by 1,000 minus 1 divided by 298. And double check, it all looks good. Okay. So negative 56.102. So negative 56.102. It's okay that it's negative because this negative is going to be larger than this part of the term. Okay, so we have ln k2 over 7.2 times 10 to the 24. Now, we this is logarithmic form. We need to convert to exponential form. And we take the log to the base, so this is like, a lawn is like log base E, right? And to do that, we take, oh, I lost my seven here. Okay, we take the base, which is E, to the power of what it equals. So E to the power of negative 56.102. 
it's going to be very small, <laughs> equals what's inside the log. So that's going to equal K2 divided by 7.2 times 10 to the 24. And that's our little, little trick there. So if we want to solve for K2, K2 equals 7.2 times 10 to the 24 times e to the power of negative 56.102. All right, plug that into our calculator. And 7.2 times 10 to the power of 24 times, I gotta click an E on this calculator, negative 56.102. And I think that looks all good. Oh, not a very big number anymore. 3.108, I lost how many sig figs we have, equals 3.108, it's unitless, equilibrium constants are unitless, and oh yeah, we'll check, we have two sig figs here, two sig figs, yeah, so we're down to two sig figs, so that's okay, 3.1, so K, K2, this would be at uh, a thousand, a thousand Kelvin there. And very briefly, before we go into the next exam problem, let's have a look at what happened. So this is a very large number, right? Very large number, number that means products are favored. Products are favored. And that's because, sorry, this says an R. There we are. <laughs> Equilibrium constant is a ratio of the products over the reactants. And if we have a very large number, then we have a lot of products compared to reactants. Now, this number is not as high. Now, if we increase the temperature, we decreased uh, the, the equilibrium constant. So that means we have less products. So if we have like, if we imagine our equilibrium equation like this, uh, and what happened is when we went from 25 degrees Celsius to 1000 degrees Celsius, the equilibrium shifted this way because K went down. K is products over reactants. By increasing the temperature, that means we have energy being released as heat on this side. We have heat on the product side because if we have an excess amount of energy as heat, think of this as excess amount of heat, by, then by increasing the temperature, that means we want to try and minimize this, this disturbance by shifting the reaction to the left. Since we have the heat on the reaction side, this would be an example of an exothermic reaction. And actually we should know that <laughs> based on this here, <laughs> uh, based on the reaction enthalpy, this is negative. So it should be an exothermic reaction. So next exam problem for the formation of ammonia, uh, equilibrium constant is 5.4 times 10 to the five at 25 degrees Celsius. And it's this value, 7.0 times 10 to the negative five, Oh, so much, much smaller uh, at 500 degrees Celsius. Calculate the enthalpy of the reaction. So enthalpy of the reaction, oh, I'll change to blue. Enthalpy of the reaction is our delta H naught for the reaction here. Okay, so we'll set up the Van Hoff equation again. So ln K2 over K1 equals negative delta H, which is what we want over R, delta H naught. 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. Okay, now this is what we want. So we can uh, we can plug things in or just kind of rearrange. So if we solve for delta H, if we multiply both sides by negative and by R, negative 1 and by R, we would get delta H 1 over T2. I'll do this in a couple steps. Minus 1 over T1 equals negative r ln k2 over k1. So they're supposed to be capital Ks. Okay, and then we'll divide by the one over t's. Oh, there should be a naught here. Standard state, don't wanna forget that. Equals negative r ln k2 over k1 all divided by 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. Hot dog. Okay, so now we just got to plug in our numbers. So negative, now R is 8.314. We want to make sure we use the R with the joules in it, of course. 
because we're solving for the change in enthalpy, uh, which has units of energy. Ln, now we need to choose which is our twos and which is our ones here. Let's choose, doesn't really matter, let's choose this as our ones, and let's choose this data set as our twos. So K2 would be 7.0 times 10 to the negative 5, 7.0 times 10 to the negative 5, and then was it 5? No, 5.4. 5 5.4 times 10 to the 5 is our K1, all divided by, now what's our T2? It's nice to label the 2s and 1s so you don't get messed up. 500 degrees Celsius, we need to add that to 273.15 Kelvin to get to Kelvin, 273.15 Kelvin. I think I can do this in our head. This would just be 7, 773, right? 773. So 773 Kelvin minus 298 Kelvin. The 0.15 is, is not significant, right? Those digits. And yeah, and we'll just plug it in now. Okay, so, yeah, okay, so 8.314 times ln, I got to press the ln separately on this calculator, ln of 7 times 10 to the power of negative 5, divided by, I better put brackets here, just in case it does something wonky on me, times 10 to the power of 5. Okay, so that's that. Now I got to do divided by 1 divided by 773 minus 1 divided by 298. And I think all my brackets are okay. So, okay, we'll see what it says. Okay, negative number. So it's exothermic. So negative 91792. 91792. So negative 917. 9, 2, and I, I don't think I did this on the last problem, but we want to cross out our units. Um, Kelvin, so this is this is divided by 1 over Kelvin, which actually cancels out with this Kelvin here, and we're left with joules per mole. And yeah, so that's, that's basically our answer. We usually report these enthalpies in kilojoules, so we'll multiply that by 1,000, so we'll say negative 9.1. No, 90, 92, or 91. How many sig figs do we have? We have four here, two here, but then we've got to look at the number of decimal places. We'll, we'll leave it in three sig figs. I think we're okay with that. 9.1, let me know if that's horribly wrong. <laughs> uh, kilojoules per mole. All right, cool. Uh, some of you may see that uh, your profs or your teachers may leave out the per mole part, but it's actually there. It's very important. It means per mole of the reaction, right? So if that whole reaction, the balanced equation, if I go up here, this balanced equation was a, was to occur once, two moles of this, one mole of this to produce two moles of this, then this is how many kilojoules would be performed. So this is per mole of the reaction. Right on, everyone. Thanks for watching. And I've got many, 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 many other videos on thermodynamics and other aspects of chemistry. And hey, yo, good luck on your midterms and good luck on your final exams. Keep studying. Hang in there. I know you can do chemistry. You just got to work at it, right? Uh, and the more of these problems you go through, you go through them with me, uh, you can get through it. Cheers. Cheers.